Uh, hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today I want to solve this circuit, which looks like a complicated circuit, and I'm going to solve it using the superposition method. I previously solved the same circuit using the voltage node method or nodal analysis. Uh, in this case, we're going to apply superposition to solve this problem. The steps are a little bit different. At the end, we're going to get the same answer. It's a really powerful method. And I'm going to show you all the steps to set it up and to get to the final answer. Okay, so let's get started. All right, I've set up the circuit here. I've set, I've given values. So all the resistors are gonna be one ohm resistors. Our constant uh, voltage source here is eight volts and our constant current source uh, puts out six amps. Uh, I've grounded it, so we have zero volts down over here. Again, the goal is going to be find these potentials, E1 and E2 at the two different nodes. Now the way superposition works is if you were gonna do a lot of algebra, what you would find is at the end, the node voltage here and the node voltage here can be written like this. Some number, I'll just call it alpha, multiplied by the first source by 8 volts, plus some other number multiplied by the current source. If you did a lot of algebra, you'd eventually get to terms that look like this. And the terms alpha 1 and alpha 2 would only depend on the impedances, or in this case, the values of the resistors. Now these alpha 1s and alpha 2s can sometimes be very complicated expressions, but the key is that they don't depend on the voltage, nor don't they depend on the current. So we say that this is linear in the sources, right? There's no terms, uh, for example, in V squared, there are no terms in I squared, there are no terms where you have V multiplied by I. So this is called linear superposition. We only have terms that are linear in the sources. Again, if I was going to do a little bit of algebra, what I would find at the end is I would find different coefficients for the voltage here at E2. However, again, it would still look linear in the source terms. There would be no terms here with V squared, no terms in I squared, and no terms that multiply V times I. These terms over here are nonlinear. And then superposition would not work. So the key to all of this is that alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2 basically only depend on values of resistors. Okay, so with all that being said, let's now show you how you apply that method in order to solve it. For example, what we're going to do here is that since there are only two source terms, let's look at our first equation. I have it written something like this, and it looks a little abstract right now, I agree, but it's going to be pretty simple. What we're going to do here is we're going to solve two problems. We're going to first solve a problem to find this solution here. Basically, I want to find the term alpha 1. And then we're going to solve a different circuit, and we're going to find the second solution. So to find the first solution, think about what you would do. Right? To find the first solution, what we're going to do is we're going to set the second term equal to zero. Right? If we set the second term, the second source term equal to zero, basically that eliminates number two. And it'll, it will allow us to solve a simpler circuit in order to obtain this term, the first term. To get the second solution, this guy over here, what we're going to do is we have to set the second or the first source term equal to zero set V equal to zero, and we're going to end up doing that by sh shorting this, uh, the two connections on each side of the voltage source, or you could just set the value to zero volts. Um, and that's going to allow us to solve a simpler circuit and in order to obtain the alpha two term. All right, this looks a little bit abstract. I'll show you what I mean by drawing the separate circuits, and hopefully it will become clearer. And then you can repeat the same steps to find e E2 coefficients beta one and beta two. All right, let's go ahead on the next page and I'll show you the circuits that we have to solve for. Okay, so this slide is really at the heart of the superposition method. Here's my original circuit. And again, I'm just telling you that the general solution for the voltage at this node and at this node is going to be some linear combination of the two sources. If there were more sources, there'd be other terms here. But in this case, I only have two sources. The solution will simply be adding two different solutions. All right, so our goal now is going to be to solve for these terms one at a time. So what we're going to do first is we're going to eliminate 
the current terms. And the way you do that, think about it in this equation, if you set i equals to zero, so we're gonna turn off the current, we're gonna set it equal to zero. Uh, the way you do that in a circuit, the way you would turn it off is, well, you could kind of just break it or get rid of it, right? If you eliminate that source, for example, if I just produce an open circuit over here, right, that is basically turning off this current source. So I'm gonna solve this first circuit up here, which is simplified because it no longer has the current source, and that's going to give me these first two terms, the ones in the red box. Now, the other thing I wanna do now is I wanna obtain the second solution, and I get the second solution by turning off the voltage source. So how do I turn off a voltage source? Well, in this case, what you wanna end up doing, let's go ahead and do it down here, the way you turn off a voltage source is not by producing a, an open circuit like this, but is by setting the voltage equal to zero across. And the way you do that is simply by shorting it out, right? If I produce a short here, I replace that power supply by a ideal wire, so there's no more voltage now across these two ends. Okay, so that's gonna be the key. I now have to solve both circuits so it seems like it's a lot of extra work but you'll see after a while it's actually much easier to do this because to solve these tr these simplified circuits becomes very very easy okay so let's go ahead and do each one at a time i'm going to start off by finding the first solution where i turned off the current then i'm going to solve the second circuit down here and at the end to get the total solution what you have to do is add up both solutions all right so let's start with the first one Okay, so this is the first case here. Again, this is really solution one, where you basically set the first source, or set the current source equal to zero. So that's key, so I have an open circuit here. That means there is no current flowing in that branch. And now what I wanna do is I wanna solve the same circuit. I wanna obtain the voltage at this node, and I wanna obtain the voltage at node E2. So let's go ahead and set up our uh, voltage node analysis for this. So what I'll first do is consider this node and look at all the currents flowing in versus those flowing out. All right, the current flowing in in this case here is going to be a V minus E1 uh, divided by R1. The current flowing out, I've just assigned it to be down here. Um, that's flowing out, I'll put a negative sign, E1 over R2. And again, there's a current flowing down this branch and I'm gonna call that current again, the voltage at node E1 has to be the same voltage uh, right here. This is just connected by an ideal, uh, ideal wire, so there's no voltage drop across here. So that means that the current basically leaving this junction here, the current flowing through I3 uh, has to be E1 minus E2 uh, divided by R3. And that's it, that has to be equal to zero. All right, there's still two unknowns in this equation. There's still, it's still coupled to E2. So which means you have to write another equation and we're gonna write another equation for this node over here. This one's much simpler to write. The current flowing in is the current flowing in right here. And that potential difference is E1 minus E2 and the amount of current you get. You have to divide by the value of the resistor. And then we're assuming there's current flowing down here through resistor R4. That's leaving that junction. So we're gonna get uh, E2 divided by R4 uh, equals to zero. All right, equation two here, you can simplify, you can group together the terms with E2, bring them on one side, uh, just like we did previously. And what you end up getting from this equation right here, this is simply a voltage divider. Uh, so what you end up getting here is E2 is equal to R4, R3 plus R4, and multiplied by the voltage at 0.1. All right, that is our simple voltage divider. Make sure you understand and you go through the algebra to get this step. And now what you end up doing is you basically just substitute that in my top equation. Actually, we're gonna start substituting the numbers in here right away, uh, just to make the algebra a little bit more simple. So E2, if I substitute the values of the resistors, they're all one ohm resistors. So that basically means this is simply uh, E1 divided by two. That makes the algebra much simpler. Now if I go back to equation one, uh, let's go do it over here, find some space. Uh, what we're gonna end up getting here is we're gonna group together all the terms with E1. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have eight for our constant voltage, uh, minus E1. Again, divided by one. 
So we don't have to worry about that term. Minus E1 again, and then minus uh, E1. And instead of substituting in E2, let's just go ahead and replace it by E1 divided by 2. And again, the values of the resistors are all 1, so that's why I've eliminated those other terms. Okay, uh, looks like we have a whole bunch of terms here, but these simplify quite a bit. Uh, what you end up getting here, this is 8 minus 2E1, and the term in the bracket here is uh, E1 over 2 equals to 0. So at the end, you do a little bit of algebra. This is 2 and a half. So the voltage E1 that you should end up getting here should be 8 divided by 5 over 2. Uh, put that in the calculator. Gives me 3.2 volts. So for the simplified, now this is very, very important here. This is really for the simplified circuit, right? It's the circuit where I've turned off that constant current source. I get 3.2 volts. And if I get 3.2 volts for that one, that automatically means that I can solve for what E2 is in the simplified circuit. So in this case, what I'm going to get is simply half. So in this case, we get that E2, the voltage at uh, this particular node, has to be 1.6 volts. And again, that is solving a simplified circuit. It's not the full circuit. So let's now go ahead and turn off the voltage source and solve a similar circuit problem. Okay, we now have to solve the second circuit. In the second circuit, what you have to do is turn off the voltage source and you keep the current source there. So we've set V equal to zero, and the way you turn off uh, voltage supplies is you basically just short them, and that way there is no voltage difference because this is just an ideal wire. All right, so now we, again we have to solve the simplified circuit, and again I want to find the voltage at the nodes E1 and E2. I've kept all my currents in the same direction. That doesn't matter. Uh, the physics will tell me now whether or not I picked the right direction. Okay, so again, I've grounded this side, so that means everything here is at zero volts. So again, if I've shorted this, that means at this point here is also at zero volts. So let's go ahead now and write our uh, nodal method to uh, the nodes E1 and E2. This is going to look very similar to what the previous case is. I have to account for this current here of six amps flowing into the junction, but uh, the other equation should look the exact same. I really haven't changed anything. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So our doing node analysis here for node here, we're gonna have zero minus E1. That there is the voltage difference across the uh, resistor R1. So the amount of current you get is given by this. That's current flowing in. And minus uh, E1 over R2, that's the amount of current flowing down here. And then again, both of these points are basically at the same potential. So the amount of current flowing in, this is basically the same point is what I'm trying to say. You have six amps flowing in, so plus six or plus I. And then again, there's some amount of current flowing through the resistor R3. And the amount of current there is flowing out of the junction. So you get E1 minus E2 again divided by R3. That has to be equal to zero. I'm going to start going a little bit faster. We have to be getting used to these techniques. Again, the second one now is applying it to this method. The current flowing in is again E1 minus E2 over R3 minus the current flowing out. The current flowing out is simply E2 divided by R4. That has to be equal to zero. Again, this leads to the exact same expression I had in the previous case. So let's go ahead and do that. Just write it down just so you remember it. This is our voltage divider, R3 plus R4, and multiplied by the potential at 1. This still applies. So which means for this particular circuit, if I have all values of 1 ohm, that this voltage is simply going to be uh, half of the voltage at the point 1. Okay, so there's my voltage divider equation applied to this particular circuit. Then what I can do is I can simply go ahead and now substitute that back over here, and I can get the voltage at point 1, which is really what I want. So let's go ahead and do that now. So the 0, I don't have to worry about this term. So I'm left here with minus E1. Forget about the values of the resistors. I'm going to simply be dividing by 1 for all of those terms. Uh, the second term here is minus E1 also. I'm left with plus 6 amps. That was also flowing into the junction. And again, I'm left with minus E1 and minus half 
of E1. All that has to be equal to zero. All right, we group all the terms together. Um, what do we get here? Minus 2E1 plus 6. And again, minus, uh, this is E1 over 2. Has to be equal to zero. So the value of E1 that you get here, if I did the math correctly, uh, 6 divided by 2.5. Now, that should give me approximately 2.4 volts. Okay, so this is the second solution for the node here. And again, remember, this is a particular solution because I've set V equals to zero in this case. So that means I also know the voltage at node E2 for this simplified circuit. Um, here it's going to be simply half of this. Half of this gives me 1.2 volts. All right. So we have all of the solutions that we need. Now we can go back to our original problem and substitute everything in. It's now time to put everything together now. Let's go back to our original circuit. This is really what I wanted to solve for. But what I did was I solved two simpler circuits. It was still a little bit of work, but they were still simplified because I turned off all of the other <laughs> power supplies. Okay, and what we ended up getting here was 3.2 volts when I turned the current off for E1 and 1.6 volts up here. And when I turn the constant voltage supply off, what I ended up solving for was 2.4 volts for the voltage at node E1 and 1.2 volts for the voltage at node E2. Now again, these are particular solutions of simplified circuits. What I'm interested in now is the total solution. And the way you get that now is you simply have to add up both solutions. So what we ended up getting here was 3.2 for this one. And plus, when I included only the current source, I got 2.4. It's remarkable that when you add both of those together, you simply get 5.6. Again, if I want to find the voltage at node E2, I got 1.6 for the first solution plus 1.2 for the second solution, which gives me 2.8 volts. Again, these are the exact same solutions I obtained for this problem when I simply use the uh, voltage node method in a previous video. You can go check that out. It turns out that regardless of the technique that you use, even if you wanted to use Kirchhoff's laws for this one, you would also get the same answer. Uh, it's good to know a lot of different tools when you're looking at complicated circuits. And just practicing circuits uh, will get you better at solving problems. All right, thanks for watching, folks.